Ignition sequence start. All engines are running. Since its launch, Voyager 2 has been one of our greatest tools. With nearly 50 years of service, the Voyager space probes have been in space longer than most of us have been alive. These old probes have done more than their fair share of scientific research, and despite having already completed their respective missions, to this day Voyager 2 continues to serve us and send us as much data as it can. Now, as Voyager 2 approaches the final years of its legendary career, it again continues to deliver to us some of its latest mind-blowing images. Voyagers Launched in 1977, the twin Voyager missions were meant to usher in a new wave of scientific data. Initially, these probes were meant to explore the planets within our solar system. Now, they act as regular sources of data regarding the infinite vacuum of space. When these probes were first launched, nobody at the time realized the true potential of these incredible machines. Because, to this day, the twin probes continue to regularly transmit new data back to Earth for analysis. Thanks to the power of radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs for short, the probes are still functioning even four decades later. The RTG contains plutonium and converts the radioactive decay into an electrical current to power the spacecraft. Because the Voyager's plutonium fuel has a half-life of nearly 90 years, it's ideal for providing energy for extended periods of time. The fact that the Voyagers have lasted so long has proven invaluable to the world of astronomy. Without these two probes, we might have never had the chance to study the unknown that lies beyond our solar system. Realistically, these probes really should be called Survivors 1 and 2, because that's what they have done – survived. These old machines have been done with their mission for some time now, yet they continue to hurdle into space, working for the men and women of NASA. Take Voyager 2, for instance. The probe is nearly 20 billion miles or 32.19 billion kilometers from Earth. That is more than 200 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Since its launch, the probe has not stopped moving for even a millisecond. Traveling at speeds of 35,000 miles per hour or 56,327 kilometers per hour, the probe has seen more of space than any astronaut or astronomer alive. And while there are no more planets for these probes to explore, the probe continues to work diligently, recording data on such things as solar winds and magnetic fields. Crossing the threshold between our solar system and interstellar space in 2018, the space probe continues to drift further and further away from us, infinitely. The Pale Blue Dot Now let's get to the real meat and potatoes of the video. The last image was sent to us by Voyager 2. Firstly, it's important to clarify a few things about the Voyager missions. 1. They will never ever return to Earth. Their destiny lies among the stars, flying through space forever. While they will be flying through space forever, they will not be living forever. Their batteries do have a lifespan. When the batteries die, their life is spent. Voyager 1 and 2 will effectively be dead. Yes, these are the probes that hold the golden record. Real quickly, the record consists of 115 analog encoded photographs, greetings in 55 languages, a 12-minute montage of sounds on Earth, and 90 minutes of music. It's not very likely that it will ever be found, but hey, it's fun to dream. And finally, the cameras of both Voyager 1 and 2 have been shut down for many years. This was in order to conserve the remaining power and direct it into other remaining instruments. Plus, to be fair, there's nothing really left to take photos of in interstellar space. It's all just empty space and starlight. So, what were the final images the Voyagers sent us that warranted enough attention for you to come here and listen to me talk for 10 minutes? Well, have you heard of the pale blue dot? It's Voyager 1's final transmitted photo, and it really puts things into perspective. My astronomy fanatics should be familiar with this famous photo. Taken in the year 1990, nearly 3.7 billion miles away from the Sun, that's nearly 6 billion kilometers, the pale blue dot is exactly as it sounds. A picture of a pale blue dot the size of a pixel. That's what Earth looks like that far away. We humans are a speck on a planet that houses nearly 8 billion of us. And this planet we live on, even though it feels so big sometimes, is just a pale blue dot in its own solar system. If that doesn't make you feel small, then think of this. This massive solar system in which our pale blue dot lives is just a small speck of dust in the Milky Way galaxy. To make things worse, our galaxy is one of a million. Out there, you never run out of room. Galaxies are born, destroyed, and born again. An infinite cycle of elements coming together and creating a forever expanding space. Take a moment, breathe that in, I know, it's a lot. 
Maybe the photo itself is not terrifying, but if you let yourself think about it long enough, it will give you chills. Breathe. One, two, three. Good? Good, because you need to understand just how small we are to understand the true lengths that Voyager 2 went to capture these next images. The final pictures. Between the twins, Voyager 2 is arguably the more famous of the two. While Voyager 1 is the one that provided us with the image of the pale blue dot, Voyager 2 has many more accolades under its belt. You see, when the Voyagers were launched, they were launched a month apart. First Voyager 1, then 2. Both were sent in opposite directions of the galaxy, and initially they were meant to research their respective planets. Although by both luck and a little strategy, Voyager 2 was actually able to study both its planets and Voyager 1's planets. To add insult to injury, Voyager 2 did it better than Voyager 1. It is also the first spacecraft to observe Neptune in great detail. A lot of what we know about the gas giants is because of the Voyager missions. It's like a bitter sibling rivalry, where one is clearly winning. For example, Voyager 1 flew within 64,200 kilometers or 40,000 miles of Saturn. But Voyager 2 flew 41,000 kilometers or 26,000 miles of it. More so, it took the better photos which I'm about to show you. First off is the famous rings of Saturn. You see, prior to the Voyager's missions, scientists thought the rings of Saturn were simple and uninteresting. However, what they actually found were these very intricate and detailed structures. The rings weren't as simple as the scientists had originally believed. No, these magnificent rings had layers and kinks. They have moons flying among them and debris of ice and rock that make it reflect the sun's light. Parts of the rings can actually be quite thin as well. There are parts of the ring that are not much taller than a two-story building. It's because of these detailed photos that the rings of Saturn are as popular as they are. I guess it's fair to say that Saturn owes its immense popularity to the Voyager missions. After Saturn, Voyager 2 traveled a whole 896 million miles, or 1,442 million kilometers, to Uranus. Thought to be a simple gas giant, Voyager 2 proved otherwise, helping discover 11 moons and rings similar to Saturn. This ice giant gave us more than we bargained for. Amongst the plethora of new discoveries, moons such as Puck, Portia, Juliet, Cressida, Rosalind, Belinda, Desdemona, Cordelia, Ophelia, and Bianca were discovered. Yes, they are all Shakespeare references. Astronomers and poets seem to go hand in hand. The fun does not stop there. Perhaps the biggest observation of all was the degree to which Uranus was rotating. This planet, whose equator is nearly at a right angle to its orbit, has a tilt of 97.77 degrees. If all the other planets are standing up, Uranus is lying down. I can only imagine how strange the weather on that planet must be. Then, last but not least, Voyager 2 traveled another 1.1 million miles, or 1.7 million kilometers, to the last stop on the tour of the solar system, Neptune. With this being the last planet to visit before hurdling into the infinite beyond, at this point Voyager 2 was practically done. Although it was not done surprising us, the photos of Neptune provided what a lot of people consider to be the biggest mystery in our solar system, the auroras of Neptune. If you have ever gotten a chance to witness the northern lights, then you would understand just how breathtaking they can be. If you have not had the chance to witness these auroras, then you understand just how rare they can be as well. For those of you that don't know, auroras are caused due to the plasma from the sun interacting with the magnetic field of the Earth. When a solar flare occurs, the plasma that is sent hurtling into space hits our magnetic field. It's like Earth's shield. Well, plasma, being slightly magnetic, is then deflected from our planet and then attracted to our magnetic north and south pole. Thus, the auroras are created. Well, Neptune is literally the farthest planet from the sun. Not only that, but much of the plasma particles ejected from the sun are swept away by the small rings of Neptune. Yet, the auroras still appear. Why? Well, years of scientific research have led to this answer. Because they do. Neptune is still greatly understudied in terms of its auroral activity. So, in the coming years, both scientists and astronomers may discover some clearer distinctions between the aurora experienced on Earth versus that of Neptune. The prospect of these extremely rare auroras appearing on a planet that really shouldn't have them has caused many conspiracy theories about the nature of Neptune. Although everything is a legitimate theory until proven otherwise, I suppose. With Neptune in the books, Voyager 2 continued on its merry way, past the heliopause and into interstellar space, destined to float for eternity looking at the stars. Perhaps one day, a million years from now, it will find a home on a moon or asteroid, 
or perhaps it will continue to float as the flagship of human curiosity and scientific achievements.